the first part of section 2.3, uh, zeros of polynomial functions, will remind us and refresh us on long division and synthetic division. Now remember, for long division and synthetic division, each exponent must have a, have a placeholder. And our first example doesn't, um, it, we don't run into the situation because we have x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x to the first, and then no x. So each of our um, exponents does have a coefficient to go with it. But if you look ahead at letter B, we have x to the fourth, x to the third. We don't have an x squared or an x to the first power, so we're going to have to add zeros in there uh, to help us divide that. Okay, so remember when we do long division, um, x plus 4, we divide by the factor, which is different than synthetic division, but we divide by the 0 in synthetic division. So we have x plus 4 divided by x to the 4th plus 5x to the 3rd plus 6x squared minus x minus 2. You know, one of the annoying parts about long division is rewriting down the problem as we, uh, as we go. So we ask ourselves, how many times does x go into x to the 4th power? Well, we can divide x to the 4th by x, and we get x to the 3rd. So it goes into it 1x to the 3rd. Or you can think of it as, what, what do I multiply x by to get x to the 4th? Well, that's going to be x to the 3rd. And I like to write over the x to the 3rd in the original problem, just so that everything lines up. So then we have x to the third times x, which is going to give us x to the fourth. x to the third times 4 is positive 4x four to the third, and then we subtract. If we've done this correctly, then our first term, our leading terms, will cancel. So x to the fourth minus x to the fourth is 0, and then 5x to the third minus 4x to the third is positive 1x to the third, and then we can bring everything down. Now, some people bring just the next few terms down. I like to bring everything down, just so it's all here. Okay, then we ask ourselves, what times x gives you x to the third? Well, that's going to be x squared, positive x squared. So then we'll do positive x squared times x x, and that gives us x to the third. Positive x squared times 4 gives us positive 4x squared. And because it is so easy to mess up your, uh, your signs, we, we want to be very careful about you know, positive or negatives because then we subtract, we get a completely different answer. So then we subtract x to the third minus x to the third is 0. 6x squared minus 4x squared is 2x squared. And then I'm bringing down minus x minus 2. All right. Um, x goes into 2x squared, 2x times, so plus 2x. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 4 is positive 8x, and then we subtract 2x squared minus 2x squared is 0. Negative x minus 8x is negative 9x, and then we bring down the 2. And then we say, how many times does x go into negative 9x? That goes in negative 9 times. So then negative 9 times x is negative 9x, and then negative 9 times 4 is negative 36. And then we subtract Ni negative 9x minus negative 9x is 0. Negative 2 minus negative 36 is positive 34. So this 34 is our remainder. So the way we write our answer is we take our quotient, which is this stuff above the division sign up here. This is our quotient. So we're going to say x to the third 
x to the third plus x squared plus 2x minus 9 plus our remainder over the divisor, what we divided by. So that would be our divided answer. So that, that is not a polynomial because we have a remainder to it, but that is our, our quotient uh, for division. So letter B, for letter B, we're, we're taking a quadratic as what we're, our, our divisor, and we're dividing by 2x to the fourth minus x to the third, and we don't have any x squared, so we need to write plus 0x squared. We don't have any x to the first power, so we write plus 0x, and then minus 2. Now, you may think that dividing by a quadratic makes the problem take longer. It actually will make it take shorter because uh, we won't have as many terms. I'm not saying it's easier. I'm just saying there isn't as much uh, math to do. There isn't uh, you know, as many steps. We brought all this stuff down here in this problem, but we're not going to have that in this one. So 2x squared goes in 2x to the fourth, x squared times, so x squared, because x squared times 2x squared is 2x to the fourth. x squared times x is positive x to the third, and then x squared times 1 is positive x squared. And then we subtract. 2x to the fourth minus 2x to the fourth is 0. Negative x to the third minus negative, uh, sorry, negative x to the third minus positive x to the third is negative 2x to the third. 0x squared minus 1x squared is negative x squared. And then I'm bringing down plus 0x minus 2. So let me go back and say, okay, what number uh, can we multiply 2x squared by to get negative 2x to the third? That will be negative x. Negative x times 2x squared gives us negative 2x to the third. Negative x times positive x gives us negative x squared. Negative x times 1 gives you negative 1x. And then we subtract 2x to the third minus negative 2x to the third is 0. Negative x squared minus negative x squared is 0. 0x zero minus negative 1x is positive x. And then we bring down the negative 2. Well, you may say, you may notice that we can't divide x minus 2 by 2x squared uh, up there because there's nothing we can multiply 2x uh, squared by to get x. So we're done. We can't divide any further. So our answer is going to be x squared minus x. That was our quotient, our stuff above our dividing symbol, plus our remainder, x minus 2, over our divisor, 2x squared plus x plus 1. That would be our, our final answer. So letter C, we have x to the third minus 1. So we can write this x to the, whoops, x to the third minus 1 divided by x to the fifth Oh, uh, we got to go all the way down now to 7. So plus 0x to the 4th plus 0x to the 3rd plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 7. Okay, x to the 3rd can divide into x to the 5th x squared times. So x squared times x to the 3rd is x to the 5th. And x squared times negative 1 
is negative 1x squared. And I'm going to write that under the x of the squared. You can say, well, what goes in between? Well, what, what's going to go in between is 0x to the fourth plus 0x to the third. And that's not changing anything. It just makes it visually easier to do the math. So when we subtract x to the fifth minus x to the fifth is 0. 0 x to the fourth minus 0 x to the fourth is 0. 0 x to the third minus 0 x to the third is 0. 0 x squared minus negative 1 x squared is positive x squared. And then we can bring down the other stuff. But then we ask ourselves, how many times does x to the third go into x squared? Well, there are none. We can't do that. So then our answer is x squared plus our remainder x squared plus 7. Notice I didn't write uh, 0 plus 0x because we don't need to. Over x to the third minus 1. That would be it. So higher exponents doesn't necessarily mean harder. It does mean, though, that we need to be more careful so that way we remember all of our placeholders. All right, letter D, um, I probably would have changed letter D if I was thinking more clearly because we have x minus 1 to the third, which is different than what we just did earlier with x minus 1 to the third, because remember that's x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 1 three times, which we did talk about at the beginning of the year using our shortcut formula would be x to the third minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 1, and then we're going to divide this out. So we have x to the third minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 1 divided by x to the fourth plus 0x to the third plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 0. Okay, you see how many times does x to the third go into x to the fourth? Just x times. So then we have x. Um, times x to the third, which gives us x to the fourth. x times negative 3x squared gives us negative 3x to the third. x times uh, positive 3x gives us positive 3x squared. x times negative 1 gives us negative 1x. And then we subtract x to the fourth minus x to the fourth is 0. Uh, 0 x to the third minus negative 3 x to the third is positive 3 x to the third. 0 x squared minus 3 x squared is negative 3 x squared. 0 minus negative 1 x is positive 1 x. And then we bring down plus 0. Let's say, okay, how many times does x to the third go into 3x to the third, that's positive 3. So then positive 3 times x to the third is 3x to the third. 3 times negative uh, 3x squared is negative 9x squared. 3 times 3x is positive 9x, and 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Subtract. 3x minus 3x to the third minus 3x to the third is 0. Negative 3x squared minus negative 9x squared is positive 6x squared. 1x minus 9x is negative 8x. And 0 minus negative 3 is positive 3. Oops, this should have an x. And then our answer is going to be x plus 3 plus our remainder, 6x squared minus 8x plus 3, over, and I'm going to write this back as x minus 1 to the third, and not this ugly mess up here. And this would be our acceptable answer. So yeah, viewing long division, 
it's very tedious. It is very easy to make a mistake if you're not careful. And when you do make a mistake, like you're looking at my answer and you look at your answer and they're not the same, it's hard to go back and see where the issue is. So with long division, it does have its benefits. Um, it will always work. It can be used dividing any two polynomials. Um, it allows us later on to help factor things. But last year we talked about synthetic division as well. But the downside of synthetic division is that the fat you can only divide by a linear factor. You know, up here we divided by one x minus one raised to the third power. Here we divided by two x squared plus x plus one, a quadratic factor. Here we divided by a cubic factor. Uh, we did divide by a linear one in letter A, so we could do that synthetically. But B, C, and D, we couldn't use synthetic division. So for synthetic division, we always divide by the zero of the polynomial. So for dividing by x minus 4, we're actually going to use 4 in synthetic division. So 4, and I put a box up here. And then we write our coefficients, 3, negative 10, 12, and negative 22. Uh, and again, if we don't have a variable, we got to put 0, but we have... Uh, x to the third, x squared, x to the first, and no x. So we don't have to put any placeholder zeros. So we bring down our first number, 3. 3 times 4. So we multiply 3 and 4 and get 12. And then we add, which is different than long division where we subtract it. So make sure we are doing that for these problems. Then we have negative 10 plus two, uh, 12 is positive 2. Positive 2 times 4 is 8. 12 plus 8 is 20. 20 times 4 is 80. Um, 80. And then negative 22 plus 80 is 58. So 58 would be our remainder. Now, Another thing that was nice about long division is that your, your quotient already had the variables in it. You know, that's x plus 3. This one was just x squared. This one was x squared minus x. Here we have to figure out, okay, what should the variables be? You always start at 1 less than what we had in the original. So we had an x to the third, so that means this is going to be 3x squared plus 2x plus 20, and then we add our remainder 58 over x minus 4. So that trips people up a little bit having to plug in or figure out what our variables are, like x squared, x to the third, and so on. So example three, use synthetic division to show that x is a solution uh, of the third degree polynomial and use the result to factor the polynomial completely. So we're going to divide by negative four. So I wasn't, this is not a factor, this is a solution. So that's why I'm dividing by negative four. Whereas in the other problem, I divided by positive four because our factor was x minus four. So remember, this would mean x equals 4. So we always divide by the solution or the 0, not the factor. So then we have 1x to the third. We have 0x squared minus 28x and then minus 48. So because we know this is a 0, our answer down here should be 0 as well. So I sometimes like to put that in there when I know that it is a zero. So that way I can just remember, oh yeah, this is what we should get. But if we're not told that this is a zero and we're guessing, then you know we don't what maybe you don't want to write that down. Okay, so one. One times negative four is negative four. Zero plus negative four is negative four. 
negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Then negative 28 plus 16 is negative 12. And negative 12 times negative 4 is positive 48. Negative 48 plus 48 is 0. Okay, so this worked out. So then we have 1x squared minus 4x minus 12. So because that divided evenly, it was a solution. So our factored form is going to be x plus 4 and then x squared minus 4x minus 12. And then we want to check, can we factor this? Can we factor our x squared minus 4x minus 12? And the answer is yes, we can. So we have x plus 4 and then x minus 6 and x plus 2 because negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4 and negative 6 times 2 is uh, negative 12. So just realize that once you do your synthetic division, most of the time you're going to be asked to factor it completely. So we want to make sure remember to do that. And our last example, it says verify the given fa uh, factors of the function, find the remaining factors, and use the result to write the complete factorization of f and list all the real zeros of f. So this sounds like it's going to take a really long time, but it's really not because they're all built off of each other. So we have two factors here. So for x plus 2, this is going to be x equals negative 2. And for x minus 4, that's going to be x equals positive 4. So we're going to do synthetic division with one of them first. And then that result, we're going to do synthetic division with um, with the other 0. All right, so let's do negative 2. And we have 8, negative 14, negative 71, negative 10, and 24. So bring down the 8. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. Negative 14 plus negative 16 is negative 30. Negative 30 times negative 2 is positive 60. Oops, positive 60. Negative 71 plus 60 is negative 11. Negative 11 times negative 2 is positive 22. Negative 10 plus 22 is 12. 12 times negative 2 is negative 24. And then we add that, we get 0. So once we do, I want to make sure that I'm going to put like a, a check here because I don't want to divide by negative 2 again. I now want to divide by positive 4. So positive 4, and I'm going to use this result here. I'm just going to bring those down. 8, negative 30, negative 11, positive 12. Okay, bring down the 8. 8 times 4 is 32. Negative 32, or negative 30 plus 32 is positive 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 11 plus 8 is negative 3. And negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. And then we get 0. So we verify that those two factors are indeed factors of our original f of x function. So now we have 8x squared. And you say, well, how do you know it's 8x squared? Well, we start with x to the fourth, which means this, this one would be a third degree function in x to the third power. And then that means this one would be an x squared. So we have our factorization, x plus 2 times x minus 4 times 8x squared plus 2x minus 3. Now we want to see if we can factor that. Again, you could do guess and check or you could do grouping. Uh, so we want to ask ourselves, are there two numbers that multiply to 
8 times negative 3, which is negative 24. Now the two numbers that multiply to negative 24, but add to 2, and there are, it is negative uh, 4 and positive 6. So we have our x plus 2 factor and our x minus 4 factor. But then here we have 8x squared plus 6x minus 4x minus 3. So x plus 2 times x minus 4. And then we do our grouping. We can factor out a 2x. And we're left with um, x, sorry, 4x plus 3. And here we can factor out a negative 1. And we're left with 4x plus 3. So x plus 2 times x minus 4 times 4x plus 3, this part here. And then our leftover is 2x minus 1. So that's our complete factorization. Now to solve get our zeros, we set each of them equal to 0. So let's, let's note that, that this is the factorization. And then our zeros, x equals negative 2, positive 4. We have to set this equal to 0, but you may, if, if you're able to look at this and do that in your head, and say, oh, I know what the answer is going to be. Um, doing mental math, okay, that's going to give us negative 3 over 4. And then this one is going to give us positive 1 half, as 2x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1 to both sides, and then divide by 2. So one of the, one of the ways you could do those, you know, shortcut, is take the opposite of this number and divide it by that. Whoops, I want to use a different color. And divide it by that. Um, I don't really like to show shortcuts sometimes because you may either misinterpret the shortcut or use it when it doesn't apply. But it applies for these linear factors. If we look at this, the opposite of positive 3 is negative 3 divided by the number in front of x. Okay, so it should be negative 3 over 4. Well, that's what we got here. Okay. So these problems do take time. Uh, they can become tedious, so just make sure you are uh, slowing down and thinking through them instead of just trying to rush and getting it done. Right. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe.